Get up, back it in, Yay. let me begin. <laughs> I'm nervous. You, you look nervous. <laughs> Nice. I have no idea what is going to come out of your mouth. Have you got your little book of I've notes? I've got some notes questions? here. I've got a beer. The problem is, I'm going to start. I've got I can't have a beer, can I? Sponsored by Nestle. Oh, thank you. Other war brands are available, yeah. obviously. Cheers. Cheers, darling. So the lady. Just, just for the record, I'm, I'm up the dirt, and this is, yeah, definitely water. <laughs> so for, uh, for those people who are listening, this is uh, the one and only Polly James. Woo! Ex capital South Wales, yeah. uh, ex nation, ex nation. Oh, god, do you want me to go through host, more? podcaster, mm. magazine, magazine queen? Oh, thanks, then. Uh, I am on the cover of a magazine, this yeah. Time. <laughs> you are at the moment, <laughs> give it a little plug. I know, style of the city mag, 10th, <laughs> 10th edition. Um, no, it's wicked. Um, thanks for coming on, mate. my pleasure. Thank so, you very much. Uh, how's life? So, I haven't seen you properly now in ages, so uh, what's going on? Well, um, yeah, I'm pregnant now, Mikey. Can you believe? I know. We're wrapping a little babes. We didn't. Know. Here's the thing. This is why I'm nervous because <laughs> there's so many layers to our relationship, isn't there? <laughs> We're like brothers. Not and that sister. layer, yeah, by yeah. the way. Okay. We're like brothers um, and sisters. We are. Yeah, we really are. That's a good way to describe our relationship. But yeah, um, yeah you know a lot about me. I know a lot about you. Too um, much, probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why I was a little bit nervous. But yeah, um, it's weird because we were really close, obviously, when I was at Capital. Yeah. And then six months ago, can you believe it's only been six I know, months? It's mad. It feels like a lifetime ago, but um, six months ago, obviously Capital Breakfast ended with Matt and me. Yeah. Um, obviously still ongoing with Roman now, but yeah. Um, yeah. So me and Matt were taken off, and and then I moved sort of. Lost my little semi, buddy. I know. I kind of semi moved to London and back all the time, and then. Um, got back with a boy who I had been seeing on and off for like 14 years. Yeah. We thought, oh, I'm going to be 33 next year, but I have a kid if I want one now. <laughs> um, yeah, so now I'm having a baby. Class. So when are you due? I know. I'm due on leap year, Ooh. 29th of Feb. Bloody hell. I know, but they, they said, like the midwife was like, oh, only 2% of babies come on their, their due date. Yeah. So Yours will be. Because <laughs> it would just be you. Do you know, every scan that I've had, it's, yeah. they've always dated me on the 29th of Feb. It's like mad. So, I don't know, hopefully. They say every every baby's special, but I don't know. Might be I can't believe it, mate. <laughs> You're mad. Can you believe I'm, I'm a bit nervous, to be honest. But So, uh, <sighs> for, I suppose for the people who don't follow you or yeah. follow your Instagram, Twitter, whatever, I mean, you're quite, you're quite out there, I suppose. Mm. You put a lot of your life out there. Yeah. Let's just. Go, I want to go back to before all that, and okay. you know why you raised you. <laughs> you know, what were you like as a kid? Oh What's your kid going to be like? Is it going to follow <laughs> yeah. you? You know, what, how did you get into radio, and why radio, and all that sort of stuff? You know. Yeah. So, um, I guess I guess I was an outgoing child, <laughs> um, but it's funny because I never wanted to get into radio at all. It was like total fluke. Yeah. So I was working as a PT, randomly. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, anyway, excuse me. <laughs> um, you I know. Me, actually. I was working. You did, you did I was boxing. working as a PT, but I never actually got a qualification. Sorry <laughs> to all those clients that I had. Stole their money um, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I was working as a PT, and then I suppose I guess you know in hindsight, I have always been quite ambitious. Yeah. And when I was eighteen, I wanted to move to London because when I was doing. PT on the side I was doing like promo work and yeah, by yeah. promo work I mean like I was giving out little bottles of deodorant on the street yeah, yeah, you know yeah, as, yeah. as you've seen these the days little pop-ups and that you're doing yeah like, exactly yeah and mother yeah. yogurts and stuff like that yeah. and yeah try this try that and yeah. I was doing that and there was bigger potential in London I always yeah, wanted to be the best in my industry that type promo of thing <clears throat> yeah so moved to London and I was there for about six months with my sister yeah and then my mum, because I, I really like the I really like the promo scene because it was freelance. I could do what I wanted, yeah. you know, when I wanted that type of thing. I like working for different brands and managing my own time, that type of thing, and talking to, to p different people every day. And and my mum messaged me because I think I I was with Leighton actually when I moved originally, to London. Yeah, yeah originally. Yeah. So this is like thirteen years ago. And obviously he was in Cardiff, but he was back and forth in the Navy. So we, we made it work anyway. It was only yeah. two hours up the road. But I came back because my mum 
you saw in the South Wales Echo at the time, <laughs> there was a job for a Red Dragon FM Roadrunner, which okay, as we know yeah, these days yeah, is capital the street, street stars. stars yeah. yeah. And she was like, Oh, but you know, it's like um it's it's for two it's two days a week permanent and then you might have other work as well. Yeah. And I thought I can make this work with um and, and I knew nothing about radio. The only thing I knew about radio was that I used to listen as a punter, just like yeah. a lot of other people do. I did from, well, Mark, from Plymouth, you know? we had the Black Thunder, yeah. the Plymouth Sound. Or, yeah. So uh, I yeah, that. and, and I, d I didn't know much about the brand or just, I, I knew nothing. Yeah. So I went in totally na naively, I suppose. Didn't have any preconceived ideas of what it was yeah. about, but, you know, an epiphany moment, I suppose. I walked into the radio studio downstairs yeah. now, because it was all one big building. Yeah, of course, in the Red Dragon. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I loved it. And I literally fell in love with it. And then, I, you yeah. know, we were talking about how, you know, I always want to try and be, this sounds weird, but the best yeah. at what I do. Um, I, and I wanted to sort of, I suppose, be, you know, not kind of behind the scenes, but be the face yeah, of it. Yeah, and center of attention. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not in the, yeah, yeah, I suppose, randomly. But um, yeah, and then I tried out for, a, I know I didn't try out for a couple of shows, but back then on Red Dragon, like we were only talking like 12 years ago, yeah, yeah, it was a 24 hour schedule. Yeah, so you've all had done locally. All done locally. Yeah. So as opposed to now, we've got three hours a day. Like yeah. it's mad, isn't it? So there was a lot of opportunities. Um, and as it was, because I was sort of into a bit of rock music back yeah, then, I remember I put out a lot of different audio. You know, I, I, wanted, I wanted to try the DJing thing. <clears throat> and um, started off on a community radio station just to sort of get air miles in and yeah, things. And learn then, your trade. Yeah, exactly. Learn my trade, learn my graft, and I, I, and I absolutely loved it. And yeah. I did want to learn as much as I possibly could. It's an infectious industry, isn't oh, it? Oh, it radio? is. It's I mean, the radio bug. I'm honestly. behind the scenes, so I'm not even <laughs> yeah. the face of it. For, but even so, I love you it, know what it's like. Yeah, yeah, I love and it. then, but yeah, and I, I wanted, I wanted to graft. I had a yeah. line of where I really wanted to go, and then there was someone at Absolute Radio in London oh, who, yeah. who spotted like maybe the smallest amount of potential <laughs> was like, do you want to come and do a cover show? Fancy you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was, but I'll, I'll take it. I was like, yeah. this like hipster who's like 21 years old going yeah. up to London to be on this like, I, I call it like an old man station, but it's not yeah. really, I mean, but the audience was not a 21 year old. Yeah, of course. But um, went up there, loved it, embraced it, thrived on it and um, was there for like four years and then, you know, learned radio inside out, was had more of the bug and then um who was it? Brent Tobin. Oh yeah. Who Capital. now heads up Capital. Yeah. He called me and I think maybe can't remember who asked, but I remember him being quite influential. Um he messaged and said they want a Welsh girl for the breakfast show. Yeah. So I was like, perfect, who's the guy? Um and they said Matt Lassac and I was like, <laughs> I remember him yeah. from my Red right Dragon days. Yeah. And that was it. So, and in between all of that, I got married to a guy who was on my dragon. I wasn't going to bring that up. Well, but it's fine. It's cool. Yeah. No, I don't, not many people know that about you. So I no, was shocked I know, when you told me. I know. Me. I know. So um, there was a guy and he's obviously dust now. He's total dust. Yeah. So but um, it's funny because he, he was part of the very beginning of my radio career. Oh, okay. And he worked on radio and he was just as obsessed with radio. So yeah. I suppose I've got to give him some credit even though I really don't want him. But um, in terms of, if, in Fucking terms of like, yeah, in terms of you know fueling that ambition yeah. in me, um, that was kind of him. So, Class. Yeah. so there we are. Yeah, and then seven, well, six and a half years. Me and that yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we came in actually. And what was that like taking? It was taking it from Cam and Sally. Yeah, it was really weird. Actually. That was just as I joined, I think. Yeah, you might have joined. So we were on breakfast, but what happened first was they said. Cam and Sally is still on air. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have to put you on some sort of like a retainer. So we're gonna put you on weekends. Um, because I was leaving sort of a full-time job at Absolute. And I said, you know, I, I won't be able to come back just to do weekends. And they yeah. said, Oh, we'll put you on a retainer, excuse me, on a retainer. And um it's baby. <laughs> um <laughs> <The> baby <birds. laughs> we'll put you on a retainer and um and then you know when the right when the time is right, we'll we'll sort of, you know, sort of Put you on to breakfast then yeah, and, yeah. and ease you on to sort of breakfast and then um, yeah that was it and I think we joined so me and Matt and Gary as it was we were on in January of 2013 2013 yeah sure and then and then yeah. we went on to breakfast then in July so I must have joined in the November then yeah so, so we've just been on for like four months or something yeah, yeah of course that's right yeah yeah what was it like going from 
absolute in London and a national mm. station yeah. to what was national, but that very much that re uh, regional feel to it, especially in Wales, where it's mm. just so different to, to, to some, London. It was some, gosh, just thinking back. I think for me, I was doing overnights on Absolute. Yeah. So, and I had been doing it for three years. I remember I had a chat with my boss because they say going to London is like a pinnacle, yeah. you know, like if, you, if you're it's an on-air talent, yeah, type, I, I guess so. So it, what, a lot of people were like, oh, is it a bit of a backward step? And I, and I yeah. thought of it maybe as like a sideward, sideways step yeah, or just something different to do um, and try because I've never, I've never been a co-host before. Yeah, I've never done a breakfast show before. But also for me, like I remember thinking once I get on to say Capital Breakfast, for example, yeah. when I first started, like that was, God, that was like the peak. That yeah, was the course. messiah of all of, you know, radio shows, the yeah. Capital Breakfast, and also in my hometown. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it was, uh, there was a couple of options. I was talking to Radio One as well. Yeah. And they said to me, the guy who I was talking to, he was like, go and do some, he, I said, you know, I've got this opportunity in Cardiff, and he was like, go and do regional breakfast for a, a couple of years, yeah, get of some more air miles, get really, you know, used to being on air authentically. And so you head up the station at breakfast as well. Then. Yeah, and you're the face of the station, and um, but it didn't it didn't seem weird going from national radio station at all, I suppose, to Capital. It seemed like a like a, just a sideward step, but like a big step as well. Yeah, you know? of course. So when, um, yeah. I suppose it's where you go from being someone's assistant almost to the top job. Yeah. Even if it's not in the same company or whatever, you know, you're exactly, forging exactly. your own career, yeah. your own path. And... I, um, don't get me wrong, I was gutted to leave Absolute because yeah. they were, an they're an amazing station, I think Absolute Radio is. And yeah. I remember crying my eyes up thinking, oh, I do the right <laughs> thing. Because you do, there was an element yeah. of like, oh my God, am I ever going to get back into London? Yeah, I love this type of music, but... Yeah, and and also I'm a massive home girl. I got a big family and friends network here. Yeah, it was yeah. like almost too good of an opportunity to to um to not go for. You've done some cool things over that six years. Oh my god, it's been mad. We've See, you, some... when when you look back at it, you can't you can't fault it. Like no. in terms of the radio, you know we we've you know we're, we're familiar faces and yeah. voices in in cool. South Wales. We picked up loads of awards and yeah, yeah. you know I was um, gonna bring that up was it like <coughs> the Ar the Arius is it? Um it was the um Archiva Awards. Archiva, yes. sorry, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Archiva Awards. And like we won the best breakfast show the yeah. first year that we were on there and yeah. we were just it was and mad. You nominated again since And then we got nominated the year after we didn't win. And then we got nominated the year after that and we won it. Yeah. So it was just mad. And I remember that first year that we won the Archiva Award we um I remember Absolute Radio at a table there because yeah. you know the Oscars of the, yeah, yeah, of the radio will, and um, they were all, they all gave like a big stand and ovation. It was only a year since I'd been yeah. there, right? so it's like lush to see them all and be like, oh, I'm all done. Uh, it's almost like yeah, it was a good move. You know? Good thing with that, I suppose, that for people who don't know, you know, capital, you know, 200 to 250,000 listeners every week. Yeah. Some of these stations have, you know, is up to a million listeners. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going up some massive names and, and yeah. sh breakfast shows specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you guys obviously were walking away with, with the Yeah, I know. It was, um, yeah, it was pretty awesome. So, and, and obviously we'd only just started, so yeah. we were like, what the hell? Like, just, like Matt, who did you suck off then? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember, right, my first day walking into Capital. So I somehow, I somehow blagged this job. Someone knew someone that knew someone yeah, else. How did you get into Capital? So, Jeez. oh mate, my story is it for another pod okay, maybe. Okay. But I, I knew someone who was a recruitment guy who knew Christy mm -hmm. somehow. Uh, Christy, or yeah. Sally as well, who was the boss at the mm -hmm. time. And I got, I've got this between me and an Aussie guy apparently. Yeah. I rocked up in flip flops <laughs> to like sign contracts apparently. <laughs> they were like, who the oh, fuck right, is this okay. guy? A new sales executive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolute canon. Yeah. But I remember walking on the first day and it was obviously got there, say, at half eight, nine o'clock, whatever, and you were on yeah. air till ten. And during one of the breaks, they were like, oh, jump in the breakfast show for the last half Yeah, hour. they wanted, like, all the, the new people to come in yeah. and just experience Yeah, the show. like, for me, yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, my God, the celebrities, like, <laughs> this is fucking class who's in there. Do you remember the first thing you ever I do, said to me? I do, I do, because you remind me of it all the time. I said, <laughs> did you bone last night? Yeah. Or something, was it? walked in and you went, <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, did you have sex last night? And I was like, yeah, I actually <laughs> did, yeah. Been, that must have been a 
Oh, you, you were chatting about it, I think, there in the studio. There we are. When I walked so, in mid combo. Broke the ice, surely. Standard, obviously. So, there we yeah. go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And from then, from then on, we've been good buddies. We've been, yeah, we've been made yeah. since. Yeah. So, <laughs> obviously, capital then, huge experience. There's mm. a mental thing. So, I was, I was looking back at loads of things that I've been involved in with you. So, we yeah. ran a half marathon for charity, and there were tears, and there oh, was my God. joy. And yeah everything in between and i had like renna's delusional i had to carry oh you God, at, at one point you had yeah. the 15k star on your back for charity <laughs> but i was looking at similar things mm. I, I, and i think this is why for me radio is so powerful and emotive you know i was looking at some of the things around you know where we do the toy appeal and the yeah. charity or even when we did things like the um, dhl giveaway for the world cup Oh, when it was yeah. in the Wales, yeah. that kid got to walk out with the ball. Oh my ball. god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did some. Yeah. Yeah. What What were some of the What were some of the I suppose yeah. highlights for you? That, Gosh. Um, that was, just was tons. Yeah, so many. Do you know what? Actually, um, I was just saying. So this is my first Christmas now. I'm not being on air at Capital. Yeah. Um, and I was talking to a mutual friend of ours who works at Capital, and yeah. and I said, Do you know what? I'm really gonna miss i think it's because we're get, getting into the winter months now yeah and i'm home for a little bit and obviously i'm starting to like nest i think a little <laughs> bit with the baby i don't know yeah. but um i said you know i'm really gonna miss this year not being on air on capital during the christmas months because yeah. i think looking back i took it for granted a little bit about how how lovely that was for me yeah. being in my hometown in cardiff helping the local community do like the toy appeal for example like absolutely yeah. get it i'm it's not going to be able to do that no. and just visiting all these amazing charities yeah so for people obviously that mm. don't know the toy appeal is something that st david shopping center doing in yeah. partnership with us at yeah the capital and basically there's like 20 odd 25 charities disadvantaged children all around south wales and we get all of south yeah. wales to donate i think it was thirteen thousand. Uh, presents yeah, yeah. last year and yeah. we distribute them across south and, wales and literally we would we'd rock up to like a charity you know um and you meet the kids yeah and, you met the kids you? and and you'd it was we'd give a teddy yeah. to the child like yeah. it, there was no paperwork in between or any charity no. bullshit or whatever yeah, yeah. you know what i mean by that it was yeah, just course, like no red tape di yeah it was directly and we're just giving you know a and just making these kids days and and then you'd go back home and you'd be surrounded by family i just i'm just emotional I, wreck. yeah i know and i'm i'm really i'm really gonna miss that this year yeah. i think um but yeah it's it's stuff like that that you, you still buy a present i know i know it's, <laughs> the toy appeal is still happening this year and yeah. i'll go down there but um i think stuff like that is what i'm gonna miss just yeah. the sense of being on a local radio station or a regional yeah. radio station and just the sense of community um but then obviously you've got pros and cons now because I'm going to be on Radio X and yeah, I'm talking to the nation yeah, and, yeah. and I love being on air at Christmas and just a, a, a different a different yeah. vibe, different challenge, you know. So. I suppose that's the thing, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll look at your career, like <laughs> Fair Play to you, you know, I remember that we were chatting when you were thinking about yeah. moving on, you know, everything has a sort of time span yeah. and, and life lifespan. You know, I was, again, when I was looking at some of the other things we'd done, we looked at, yeah. you know, Auntie Joshua coming mm. to Cardiff and we got to go and be part of that whole press experience and work oh, with Matt yeah. Room. Like, I never thought I would meet people like this yeah, and it's crazy. go and do some of the crazy shit that we've done. Yeah. What What did it feel like with all the highs and, you know, some some of the lows? What, did, what was it like when obviously the deregulation came in and they went from regional breakfast to national breakfast? Like, what was that like for um, you? So for me, um, like you said, we, you knew sort of a while before yeah. um, that I'd had my, what's that phrase, eggs, my chickens laid in one, no, what's that? All your phrase? ducks in a row? Yes, <laughs> chickens in a row. I'm All your chickens, eggs in a row. Anyway, so I had my, yeah, I know, jeez, <laughs> uh, a little bit of baby brain coming through. Um, yeah. So, but I've always been like that, see? I literally plan for like years. Yeah. And I think that's because when I did join radio, it was, as I say, 24 hour schedule. And yeah. then literally within years, dropped off, dropped off, dropped yeah. off. And I'm not saying it was a bad thing because radio, you know, radio is flourishing. Yeah, radio is a group yeah. yeah, so it's, it's kind of a bit like, <clears throat> it was almost, 
it's just kind of like maybe like a safety thing for me and yeah. and just to protect myself that I'm always looking for the next opportunity yeah, even oh god I remember I signed like a two-year deal with Capital before yeah and as soon as that happened I was like right what do I do in the next What's two years yeah literally the day after and I remember like my friends and family were like just enjoy this opportunity I'm like I just can't like I'm not hardwired like that you know yeah. I always just need to just make sure that I've got something in line and then obviously that was Radio X, you know, always wanted to be on Radio X. But yeah. so so when the deregulations were coming and it was written on the wall for us a little bit and even though there were some lows, Matt had decided that he wanted to go into management. Yeah. I had lined up Radio X. Um Garen had obviously already yeah, gone to BBC, gone, which yes, he was doing as well. Exactly. So, so he was alright. Um yeah, so and me and Matt have both been quite confident in our own ability. I felt that we both left the breakfast show on a high. Yeah. Um, what was that like that last show? Oh, I remember being emotional. upstairs. I remember being upstairs. Actually. Emotional yeah. because it it's like it. Even though you're really excited to go, to, I'm going off to my dream job here yeah. on Radio X. Like yeah. really and truly it is because as I say, you know, behind the scenes, it's like, your music so much. My music, yeah. you know, on on a yeah, exactly. So, um even though me and Matt are starting new chapters and we're all excited for that and everything's fine, as opposed to, you know, we look at the radio industry and this all appears well, to be tumbling down. And so many other brands, definitely. Yeah, yeah, but it was nice for us because, you know, we just reflected on a great six years. Yeah. So it was emotional. I did cry, I think. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> did cry. Um, yeah, just, it was, I guess, a nice time just to end it I suppose yeah. I mean we could have done another year or so but then it's like Matt had the had the hunger to go into and he's obviously doing producing now with Capital and yeah, content yeah and, and he stuff. does all he's what program controller is yeah. it technically yeah, yeah, yeah. for Capital now and um, and for me like when I left as well like it it really opened up my mind to the priorities in my life as well do you know what I mean so I realised that yeah I did want to go off into London but maybe I was so um caught up in capital lifestyle because yeah, I threw myself into it. Almost not like, institutionalised, but you're in that life 24-7, Yeah, seven, and it you? is. And, you, and all you want to do was... Ever, you know, in fact, everything I did, yeah. it was for the brand. Yeah, of course. Everything I put out on social media, it was for the brand. Or I'm, you're always con you're always aware of, yeah. aware of the brand awareness I, I don't consciously think aware. people realise that you, as radio presenters, mm -hmm. you guys are freelance and you yeah. obviously go into contracts. But I know people have asked me, you know, We'll come on to it in a bit, you know, how is Polly hosting this and that and yeah. actually some other brand is partnering with it media wise, mm. why not capital? Yeah. You know I mean so But all, all those things that I did and like I mean you're gonna ask about AJ and Tyson, like yeah. I did that because I knew we'd have some great content for the yeah, show the course. next day. But um yeah, so sorry, what was your question? I'm on a tangent. <laughs> was a, we're just, we're just <laughs> chat, right? Yeah, just well let's chatting, go on to but, the, the okay, AJ okay. the AJ yeah. and well, actually, the first thing we'll okay. eat, we'll go from celeb okay. to celeb now. Okay, right? okay, okay. So the first thing <laughs> is you breaking the internet. Okay. Yeah. With we, a certain with a deer. Ryan okay, Giggs yeah, sure, and sure. a deer, <laughs> one of the most famous people to ever come out of Wales. Oh my god! Okay, yeah. And you. Yeah. At the FAW. So, um, what did you just want the story? Is it okay? So <laughs> it was we national news. The, I know it was mad, but it all came from. Where was it? I think it might have been Neil. So Neil Sloan, obviously yeah. who it's for Capital Communical. Yeah. Um, he used to work with Greg James, obviously on Radio One. And Greg James that morning perhaps might have turned um Alan Sugar into a deer on Snapchat as <laughs> when it was like <laughs> Yeah, Snapchat was like <laughs> yeah. huge, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um <laughs> and I would never do this now. I just remember you doing it now going, What the fuck is Polly doing with Roy and Giggs? <laughs> so I am um, <laughs> We're in a hospitality studio. I know, though. I know. And here's the thing, because I was hosting on staff as well, so it was very, it was very unprofessional of me. But um, I, and I wouldn't do this now, because I feel this was like so super ballsy, which is why it I think Neil was like sort of in, in a bit of shock that I actually went over to him. So I went over to him, and um, 
and it was no, it was no, there was no filter at first, yeah. so I just had it in like selfie just mode. Just chatting to him. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, hey Ryan, do you know, do you know how Snapchat works? And I said, you can turn yourself into a deer. And he was like, no. And like he was kind of entertaining me a little bit, but not. And I said, and he was, and I said, oh, do you want to try? And he goes, no. And I said, oh, come on. And I switched it on there, <laughs> and he didn't move away. So I had a good sort of ten seconds worth of footage of turning the most decorated footballer in history into Class. a deer. I feel like and you should put it on Instagram after. Yes, I will. Yeah, yeah. You can have the there. video, but um, every year it comes rolling around. Oh, on wait, Facebook it memories. came up the other day, and I was literally <laughs> rolling on the floor again, crying. It was um, it was crazy, but there's there's other stories to why yeah. me and Ryan maybe don't see eyes wide. Even though I re I like I love the guy. I think yeah. he's great. He's a legend obviously. But the funny thing um which happened a year after. So it was and this was exactly a year after at the same <laughs> FAW community awards. Yeah. So um I was ho I was hosting the award ceremony yeah. and he was guest of honour, obviously Ryan Giggs. And before the award show. Yeah, have I told you this story? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I before, before the awards, I interviewed him for Capital. Yeah, yeah. And um, oh, I think yes, I think yeah. Our, yeah so okay. I said to him, I said, "Oh, what's your favourite award? You know, yeah. like what do these awards mean to you?" That yeah, type yeah, of thing. Of and he goes, "Oh, I really, you know, I've got a lot of respect for them." I know award. what you're about to say. <laughs> I, the Mum of the Year Award resonates with me a lot because my mum used to help me as a kid and she used to drive me to sessions yeah. and wash my clothes and my boots and yeah. she'd be on the, on the, on the pitch line. On the touch and, line like, yeah. yeah, exactly. And I was like, oh, that's really lovely. Anyway, so, you know, so I'm doing this award. Bear in mind, this hospitality suite is full of about 50 no, so I'll tell you, tables. So, yeah, so we've got the, the table of honour, which is in front of us, and yeah. it's got Ryan Giggs on. Um, McDonald's Ian Rush, it. yeah, Ian Rush is on this table, and I think Craig Bellamy's on there as well, and also the guy who hired me to host the the thing. And, and actually, to be fair, he's pretty decent. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> thank God. Um, anyway, so the I think it's the fifth award because I remember it so clearly. And I said, right, ladies and gents, up next we have got Mum of the Year award, and that's Ryan Giggs's favourite award. And then the whole room, like, like, just stopped. And I think I held my silence a little bit too longer than I should have. And I was like, guys, not like that. And then, <laughs> it's obviously the whole, the he, whole thing. He'd been in the yeah. press, obviously. With, yeah. Uh, yeah, with his whatever happened. But, yeah. um, and, and I heard maybe a little, maybe one chuckle, but I was so... It's probably me. Yeah. <laughs> And then what I did hear, and I don't know whether this happened or not, um, it's only because the guy obviously who hired me for this, yeah. a, a good friend of mine as well actually, he said, yeah, um, Ryan Gase messaged Ian Rush and said, that bitch has stuck me in, <laughs> stitched me up again. <laughs> I said, are you joking? He goes, yeah, Ian Rush showed me the message, that bitch has um, stitched me up again. Oh my so I God. thought, oh God, he absolutely hates me. Have but you, I have, have, I have him seen him, I've seen him since actually, yeah. to be fair. At a couple of press conferences, and he's been yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, I bet you dread seeing him. I know he's probably thinking, "Oh, fuck sake. Like, what's he? What has he got today?" I know what's gonna. Yeah. But I, I'm really good friends with his assistant, with his like assistant. Okay. And I'm always sort of asking her, "I'm like, oh, how's everything? Oh, I said hi. I'm like, hope everything's okay." Remember me? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the um, Ryan Gig saga. Class. I like, absolutely mm. fucking. I can right up my alley. Yeah, funny. So funny how times. do you go then from Ryan Giggs? Obviously, <clears throat> hugely decorated footballer, yeah. the most decorated British the, footballer ever. Yeah, I think so. Ever. It was that, yeah. That's what the papers were reporting. You made him look like a right <laughs> mug. No, I think he got away yeah. with it twice. Yeah, true. How do you go from that <laughs> to being allowed to host Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua uh, events as well? Well, that was to do with you, wasn't it? I mean, this is, this, this, people, yeah. Right? This is what I love about Wales, because Wales just like back their own, and I yeah. just love it, and the... I'd say the community is quite small. I suppose it is because everyone knows everyone each other. Everyone knows every, yeah. Exactly. And like, um, yeah, you know, you've got hookups. And I remember you messaged Brandon. You were like, you've got the skills. You're a bit chopsy. Maybe <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ask them and talk She'll ask them about these doing the talk. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, I, I, I really like doing the, the Q&As. Yeah. Because I like, I feel, um, I don't know, maybe, the, I, I suppose... You know, I'm not a typical sports presenter, no. so maybe they would warm to me a little bit more, and 
I'm a woman, so yeah. you know they don't feel oh, as intimidated. <laughs> wow, well, no. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I love doing it, and um, I, I, I think I've got it down to a, a good knack now. You know, yeah. I go in with a bit of an agenda and what I want to ask, and yeah. um, with AJ was amazing because that like that interview got onto TMZ because yeah. he was talking about Wild Bill Wonley and yeah, stuff. Yeah, of and, course, it was huge. And then Tyson is just. I've talked about Tyson recently, like, I just think he's, I absolutely love him. My opinion of him has got, gone, like, complete 180. Yeah, what, you At mean first, not a fan? just yeah. wasn't a fan yeah. to begin with. Yeah, And then seeing things that you had done with him, and then he did mm. his Joe Rogan podcast about mental health. Yeah, and yeah. Seeing the comeback now, mm. and now I'm like, oh, I love the Yeah, guy. I just think, imagine boxing firstly without Tyson. How yeah. boring he'd would be. He'd be more, far more quiet. Yeah, and, but first of all, though... And Tyson would say this as well. He's, um, you know, he's a man of the people. Yeah. He's a family man. He's a husband. Yeah, he's a yeah. dad. He's a mental health advocate. Yeah. He's a funny guy, and then he's a boxer. Class. You know, uh, well, I mean, what Does is he? It... WWE star now. Yeah, he's a so, yeah, yeah. Um, But I just, I, he's just down to earth, and he's he's an open book, and he's willing to share his story, and he, he just is what he is, and I I just yeah. really like that about him. If you've got a question to ask, he'll answer it. And, um, as we know, I did, were you at the Anthony Joshua one? And this is where Anthony Joshua, Which, like, oh, no, the no, no, Anthony no. Joshua night. So that was a big night in Cardiff, like, yeah. a couple of years ago. As opposed to when I've interviewed Tyson, like, we'd have a meal beforehand and have yeah. a big chat. And, at the top of the valley somewhere and have a comfort. Yeah, like, yeah, and he'd rock up with his dad in the car <laughs> yeah. and he'd be like, but with Anthony Joshua, no, I, 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 you, you couldn't, I met him on stage. Yeah, yeah. You know, course. and very tight-lipped I suppose or if I'd ask I asked him about you know how do you respond to people who think that you're a, a roided basically yeah and he was like what type of these are questions what are these type of questions like do you know what I, I mean feel, very... I feel like I love Auntie Josh I absolutely love obviously yeah, met him yeah love him love my boxing yeah you know never met Tyson but Auntie Josh for me is I suppose that media trained yeah cash cow yeah, doesn't want to say careful. anything too wrong yeah, because exactly. it brings in the money. Yeah. Tyson, All these sponsors and everything. Well, this is it. The fuck he and I will always, wants. yeah, I'll always remember. He said to me, he said, after Anthony Joshua won his world title, yeah. he had, what, sponsored by Lucas Day, sponsored by Under whoever. Armour, yeah, Beats everything. And everyone, yeah. You know, like multi millionaire yeah. straight away, just through sponsors. Tyson told me that he got one free t shirt after he beat Klitschko. When he was world champion, and that was it. It's that was it. Politics, isn't it? Yeah, and politics. I just remember thinking, oh, it just sucks. It's mad. I'm, Joe, yeah. I'm, get, I'm getting uh, Joe Cordino on uh, one of these. We're gonna oh, chat boxing and stuff. Yeah. I swear to Joey after his fight on um, 29th of November, he's fighting Monaco. So after that, he's gonna come uh, on, okay. get to chat about boxing. And stuff. Yeah, I bet he's got some stories. Yeah, I can imagine. Wasn't he in camp with AJ? Yeah, they were Olympians together. Yeah, because I mean, he's obviously seen him like the well, contrast you? of what he was like before yeah, and now. Of course. Yeah, because at that night with AJ, the only person allowed in the room was Joey Cordy. Was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they obviously like mates beforehand. Yeah. And I was like, I just want to just say hi to him and just ask him some questions. <laughs> anyway, there we go. And then from yeah. there, so you've gone yeah. from football, mm. boxing. Yeah. You do loads of the darts now. Yeah, you, love you, the darts. You're mad for the love darts. Love the darts, yeah. Um, I've never really watched it like, but. What? You would love a darts night. You're the, you're the typical dude who would love a darts night out. <laughs> Fat man, you big drinker. <laughs> Just a drinker, a shirt. loving it. Yeah, but it's um, it's it's intense. The darts <laughs> when you get involved, when you get really into it. Um, I don't know. It's funny because the guy I'm with now, Leighton, he yeah. kind of got me into it like all those years ago. Yeah. And then um, he's a big sports fan. And watches whatever. It's on bloody Sky Sports. And um, we went to Ali Pali one year. So I'm, what was it like ten years ago or something? And then, yeah, just she sort of clicked with it. Absolutely loved it. Loved getting on board with it. Yeah. Um, you met some of your drama. heroes. Met some of my heroes. Beat yeah. MVG at Spider Darts. Forgot about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and that's like one of my proudest moments on Castle was bringing darts to Castle yeah. Breakfast. It's like we, any, we any other stage. No, I know. We never, we weren't, we weren't allowed to do boxing because it wasn't seen as family. Okay, right. And then Auntie Joshua would come down, and we were like, we can't Let's not do it. it. Yeah, exactly. We can't not do it. But That's the darts with yeah. you. But then, and I, now people love it. Yeah, it and it's, it's getting it's, so commercial. Like, That's yeah. what I was, you know, saying. I was like, yeah, people will love this. And when we were giving away tickets, yeah. for I think it was the Champions League when it was um, in in Cardiff. 
a couple of years ago, like phones would light up yeah. like crazy. So I was like, see, people love it. Yeah, that's the thing with, that's the thing with radio. It's a state yeah. of mind. It's not how old you are or yeah, exactly. what, you know, it is, you know, a bit of a more, it's just a state of mind. And that's why radio is going for me from, from strength to strength. Yeah. Um, I was going to, um, talk about, I was going to be a bit nausea, I suppose, just like if you were going to give a younger you tips on what you would do to either get into the industry mm -hmm. or what you would take with you that you've learned now, sort of back then, you know, what would it be for someone coming through now? Oh, it's a hard industry at the moment, purely at the moment. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's going to be like this for a while, but obviously there's a, there's a pool of presenters who have just been taken off air yeah. because of deregulations. So, you know, um, I suppose if there were jobs available, it would go to them or yeah. people who had experience because you've got these amazing radio DJs who are not on air anymore. Yeah, of thing, you know. Um, but there's there's so many. So the you know, you you do a lot of voiceover work as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, I do. Yeah, the voiceovers. I do the host, and I mean like. When I was on air at Capital, there was always like, you need to have a YouTube channel. And yeah. I think I was just above the age, of the, the cusp Where of it, it you know, yeah. yeah I mean. um, and I was just really wasn't into sort of doing and like the Instagram TV thing and it was yeah. massive. But stuff like that, I mean, like that's how you get noticed these days. Just I guess, produce isn't content. It? Content, ideas, yeah. Um, yeah. And just be yourself be, being on video, being. Being, unfortunately, it doesn't count if, if you're not seen doing it, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's weird, course. isn't it? But um, yeah, I, I think I would say that's a fair assessment, really. If, if you did want to get into the industry and finding it hard because of how maybe congested it is at the moment yeah. or where it's coming from, um, to get on, get on YouTube and, and make yourself known. And yeah, yeah. I don't know, I mean, like a lot of Love Island stars are getting on the radio now and stuff, yeah, of aren't course. they? Well, they're big names now. Well, exactly, yeah. So, um, but if you've got a bit about you and, you know, you've got an opinion... Do you get packed like the Love Island stars when you're running around the car, Yeah, if you don't mind shutting the window, <laughs> shutting the curtains, <laughs> shut the great, blinds yeah. out, should I? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I do miss being back in Cardiff, but only because, like, you know, like, say if someone did, like, yeah. ever recognise, like, the, it was obviously the voice or whatever, or the names, yeah. which is not a lot of people called Polly, but... Um, it is nice, and it's not a, it's not a sort of. I used to get messages all the time about you, mate. You all, all not, my rugby mates. Yeah, but it's it's not about like it's not like a paparazzi thing or like a famous thing. It's more of like oh, I feel like I know you because yeah. I wake up with you every day. I, or I, my pal, you know. I think that's why Capital <coughs> and other brands actually in Wales are so strong because people felt they knew the presenters. Yeah. They were accessible. You would yeah. see them out and about. A bit yeah. like the rugby boys when you see them around Cardiff. Yeah, they are that's what me and Matt wanted to be like all the time, and that's yeah. what we tried to maybe perceive on like our social media and I've never I, I will always write back to someone on my Instagram yeah even the messages that go into your bloody outbox or whatever the I'll, DMs. I'll write, yeah yeah it's the DMs. but it's just because <laughs> I just think like is it, well it can make someone's day do you know yeah, what I mean or like yeah, of course and I know it sounds naff because well it does because you know some, think, some of these people have been listening to you obviously for years yeah. and stuff you know and this and still people will message me something to do with the yeah. show like all the time well, we had a few tw tweets when i said oh, mm. any questions for polly people were like oh yeah. i'd love to see her back in wales oh yeah so, yeah it's mad isn't it how do you do on the flip side of that how do you how have you ever dealt with like especially in today's social media like i'm mm. probably bad for it but it's just like <laughs> trolls and things like that like the mental um, health side how have you dealt with that i've got to say i um you put a lot of your life out on your social, do, don't I you? I do, but I, I never ever, ever focus on. I never focus on any negative energy. So, say if I am having a bad day, and I don't know whether this is right or wrong, yeah. but I would never talk about it. Yeah. I'll never put up cryptic yeah, posts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never. I would never do it. Physics, I think it is a little bit cringe, <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I just never do it because it's not. But I don't want people to feel sorry for me or to ask, yeah. or it's not that I don't want to talk about it. It's just not me. It's just love not my those, style. Uh, love those Facebook statuses. Yeah. Like, so, 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 so. Yeah. And then like, what happened, hun? I'll, I'll inbox you. Yeah. Oh, fuck But off. even to the point where it's like, um, you know, I don't know really how to really put this. But Do you get much shit on Twitter or Instagram? Um, 
I'll say no. Michelle, like you look at Michelle. So Michelle's yeah. a Sky Sports News presenter yeah. now. Yeah. She gets an unbelievable. Yeah, she amount. does. She does. But you know, she'll bite back a yeah. lot. Do you know what I mean? So if I've she's got sharp. something, yeah, she is sharp. Yeah, I wouldn't. I I don't really say too much. I'll I'll put a lot of my life on social media, but. I don't like to whinge or be negative on yeah. that, if that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. I then so I don't get it back really. And also I am so open and I don't take myself too seriously on this. So I if people were to to troll me, I'd Lovely. be like Yeah, <laughs> and it's and it's almost like they wouldn't <laughs> because I I don't take myself seriously yeah, yeah, anyway. Or if I do something wrong I'll put my hands up and own up to it and whatever. So I'll know I'll know you a bit, right? Are you yeah. as, so people who might not and just see the social media. <laughs> yeah. Are you as mad as you come across sometimes? No. What do you think? <laughs> I'd, I'd be like, she's a bit of a cannon. Like. Although I, I would say, that. actually, now now like, seeing you at Radio X, yeah. which is that slightly older audience, yeah, yeah. I would say that you're not chilled out a bit more, but I suppose you're just not too worried now and trying to play up to any mm. audience. Not that you may have yeah. in the past, but obviously it was a lot of kids with yeah. capital at yeah. times. And it's, the, it's embodying the whole um, brand, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. You know, and you, you played 182 in the other day, that was that looked unbelievable. Yeah, it was awesome. But no, I I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, I do feel like I have become a bit different on social media. Like I've maybe calmed down a little bit. That's probably because I've got a boyfriend now. You're back, like I never, back with a I never fella. go. Yeah, back with a fella. Um, <laughs> she wasn't going rude. Not like thirst hungry posts anymore. <laughs> I know I did post boobs on there today. Did you see? You posted what? My boobs on there. Did you? Today, yeah. Shock. Um, yeah. Um, there's there's but... a picture. Was it the Halloween picture of like? The Halloween costume, which was literally a bikini and a surfboard with like a shark bite in oh, it. Oh yeah, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't I mean, too I, bad. That I was work, that, that screamed. Well, true. I am okay. single for Halloween and oh I am God. thirsty. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. It's a girl thing, isn't it? But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I have calmed down a little bit. I guess. Uh, and also, I'm looking for like a new brand. I don't yeah, think yeah. I'm like totally nuts and weird and stuff. But like, you know me, I hardly have a drink. I was about to say, I, really I, I don't respond. think people I know think, that. No. So, I'll, I'll probably see you drink four or five yeah. times in six years. Yeah, I mean, I honestly hate the taste of alcohol. <laughs> You're a cannon when you do yeah, drink. Yeah, but when I do drink, yeah, that's when it does go a little bit pear shaped. Oh, I mentioned Bloomstone, that's for another. Uh... <laughs> oh my god! That was <laughs> about, another memory, forgot wasn't about it? That, did you? <laughs> Oh, you were sober then. I was sober. You were laughing that I much and wet yourself. I, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't oh, even drinking. Unbelievable. It's, I don't need. I. I really. And I know it. Loads of people say this. I don't need drink oh, to, yeah. to have a good time. Genuinely, I don't. You don't. No. I don't. You're I can just get. Different. Yeah. I just. I can just get stuck in, and I'm yeah. to have a kind of coke. Maybe the coke makes me a bit <laughs> too much sugar. Like. I know. Class. So, Hey, we've um, <coughs> we've had a, I've had a few questions. Uh, Have you actually? Off, yeah, genuinely, oh I've okay. had uh, three or four questions. Okay, come on then. One of them is definitely a no go, so I won't answer. Go on, go on, go for it. There, there's one. Right, so uh, Tom, I'm going to name him now. Tom Dyson. Okay. Spit or swallow? Oh my god! <laughs> it wasn't me. Social media. Tom Dyson. Is. It just shows your type of followers, hey. Oh mate, it's rugby. That is. <laughs> is that was, it? That was yeah. my old life. That was right. my old life. Okay, I can't answer that now. I'm embedded to be. Come okay, on. yeah, good. Well, I wasn't going to ask it, but okay. all right, it's definitely swallows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next. So uh, one of my mates, M4, said. Who M4? Yeah. Yeah. He, they call him the M4 because he's got Cause two odd shoulders. Oh my Fucking God. shit, rugby right, chin. Okay, okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather have a vagina on your head or five dicks on your back? Like a vagina on my head because it would just look like a, a gash. <laughs> like, like a, like a cut, scar. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so stupid. I mean, these are the questions I, I got. Like, Why isn't anyone asking me like, about radio have, or whatever? Yeah, Amy Morrison. Okay. Amy Morrison, okay. In uh, Nottingham. Okay. So she asked best and worst interviewers. Oh, God, I always get asked this. Well, interviewers. Uh, people, people who I've interviewed. interviewed. Sorry, yeah, yeah. People who right, obviously interviewed. Tyson. Yeah. It's got to be my number one. Yeah. Purely because he's great. Because he he makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, as an interviewer, it's really it's part of your job to get the audience on side, especially yeah. if you're doing like a live a show. live show. Yeah, yeah. Of course. And it's important then because if they feel comfortable and 
you, you just feel like a little vibe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, and Tyson does that for you straight away. Yeah. You know, he comes on singing and dancing, and then everyone's having a good time, and you think, oh, I can ask anything here, and it'd be <laughs> yeah. great. So, yeah, Tyson, for so many reasons, and the reasons I said before yeah. as well. Who's the, the worst? worst? Who's the worst? I, I, I mentioned this in, in that magazine that I'm in, yeah. but um, to be fair, we have, I haven't had many bad interviews, yeah. but I, I'll, this is the one I go to because. It's just the one that I remember. And I, to be honest, I can't even remember if I was there or whether I've just heard about it. But <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But Matt and me, I think, we interviewed Jesse J. Oh, okay, yeah. Do you remember this yeah. story? So, basically, Matt went in with, and we're both the same, me and Matt, like, we'll, we'll go in with these stupid questions <laughs> just because... Yeah. No one wants to know about your new album. We don't care yeah. about why you wrote this song. We want to know whether you're shagging Tom Jones. <laughs> so Matt went in. <laughs> it's like, so there's this rumour that you and Tom Jones are getting it on. And then she went ballistic. Class. Like berserk. And, and we just turned around. Well, who are you shagging? Or something like that. Literally, like to Matt. And Matt was like, but I can't remember if I was there. So it was. You just heard it. Yeah, maybe Matt was telling me about it or something, but I, I think I was there, and I just remember thinking, "Oh my god!" But gen generally, I is I, I haven't had any bad experiences, not that I can remember anyway. But I maybe Ryan Giggs. That, <laughs> I know, that, that was kind of bad. That's provided that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stories for days, so <laughs> yeah. that's absolutely fine. Exactly. Class. So um, yeah, I mean, I hasn't haven't had too many nightmare interviews. Thank oh, God. Good and. Finally, then, so what's mm -hmm. the uh, what's the future hold for Miss oh, Polly James? Well, hopefully, I'll baby be on the way. Soon. <laughs> um, yeah, late. What's late in yeah. days? Yeah, late in. No, well, I don't know. We're having a baby now, so yeah. it's sort of a bit like. Don't want to be in a wedding dress with a drum like that. Well, yeah, especially <laughs> the way I'm going. Bloody hell! Um, I don't know. Um, well, depends what sort of child I have. Yeah. So hopefully. Um, little baby indie hat, that's what we're going to call her, is Class. going to be healthy. Yeah. That's all we wish for, obviously. And um, I'm going to, I just want to embrace being a mum. Yeah. I want to, as I say, you know, like, even though it doesn't seem, and I probably come across as a loose cannon, but honestly, I've, you know, you put your heart and soul into radio yeah, and cool. working. And I've, for the last 12 years, yeah. back and forth, my priority has always been work and career. So, I said, off. yeah, literally a bit of time off and come back when the opportunity's right. And who knows, yeah. there might not be an opportunity for a while. But for me, I've got peace of mind with that. And I'm going to just, as I say, embrace being a mum, which I literally can't wait for. Yeah. Um, and the, the, uh, I suppose the thing for you is you've got all those other little things that you have been doing. <clears throat> I'm not just saying this, you're one of the hardest working presenters I've ever oh. seen. I've only seen six since I've worked. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're one of the hardest with me and that. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, you've got so much going on that you could go yeah, into. Yeah, so. yeah. And I, I, I don't know, because I say, like, I want to try and embrace being off for however many months. You'll get you itchy know. fingers, mate. Uh, well, this is it, see. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah I, I probably will. And I'll probably, like, I'm going off on maternity during the Premier League of Darts. And I'm like, oh, okay. fuck's sake. <laughs> I was like, do you think I, I, could, I, know, I'd be like, do you think I could go and work in like Liverpool like a week <laughs> after the baby's born? Like, it's like, no. Not a chance. Um, yeah. What's he um, going to do? Breastfeeding? I know. <laughs> yeah. Just have a bit of express here then. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't know. It's going to be really hard because I hate missing out. I got mad like FOMO. I hate yeah. missing out on opportunities and that's just the hustle of being a freelance, I guess. But yeah. I do. I really want to, um, I'm going to have a baby in Wales. I'm going to move back to Wales, obviously, and have yeah. Matt leave here. And then, as I say, if there's a good opportunity that comes back up at Radio X, and you know they've said they'd have me back, and Perfect. I I love Radio X, like it's it's a dream, obviously. So to go back there would be awesome. Be a working man. Get you one of the days instead of to stay up till one in the morning. Yeah, I know. You. Well, that's it, see. But um, yeah, hopefully you know something might come about. But they've you know it's a great schedule. It's like I they've got amazing presenters on. I mean, like yeah. I'm on a station with freaking. Chris Moyle and Johnny Moore, Moore. Yeah, like, it's like, and I'm like sandwiched in between. Yeah. It's like, it's crazy. But, um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. Like, exciting either way. Yeah, it is. It is exciting. It's a new chapter. But, you know, I'm pretty good at sort of, um, as I say, trying to get in at peace of mind with something. Yeah. And once I've got that, I'll be fine. 
I'm happy just going on walks around the barrage every day with a cup of coffee yes. with my baby. I'll pop out another Lady one. Lady of leisure, mate. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine it now. I know. Like, so I said to the other, I said the other day to Lily, I was like, oh, would you let me just be like a live at home mum and just chill <laughs> and everything? He can, like, he well, can be the breadwinner. Oh, yeah. yeah. So well, he worked away, didn't he? Yeah, so, of but yeah, the future is a bit daunting until I have the little girl because yeah. I don't know. I've had quite a good pregnancy, which means the birth is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> oh, so, who Ada. bloody knows? I've got nothing but love for you, mate. Oh, thank, thank you, you. for uh, coming and catching congrats that. on the new podcast. Thank you. Uh, you've got your own podcast, don't you, that uh, if oh, people want to listen to? Age is old, that is. Yeah, and it, do you know what? But interesting, if you are on radio, if you are a radio person listening, interesting, because that was recorded maybe coming up to two years ago now. and. As you know, the radio industry has changed massively. It's across a load of different sectors yeah. of radio as well. Yeah, isn't it? all the things that I love about radio. So you've got sport and radio, yeah. and some yeah, some cool names actually. Showbiz and radio. The yeah. breakfast podcast that I did was with Richie, who was on the Christian O'Connell Breakfast yeah, Show, and then Amy Vos, who was on Virgin Breakfast. And now, obviously, we're all on different spots. <laughs> yeah. He's in. He's doing Drive, Amy yeah. Vos is doing Late on Virgin, and I'm on Radio X, so it's like, it's really bizarre <laughs> to listen back, yeah, but um, yeah, that was a while ago. Give it a listen, what was it called, 10 Things? Uh, 10 Things That I Love About You, My Decade in Radio, I think that was it anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember my own Class, hey look, yeah. good to see you, and, uh, and you. we'll uh, catch up again soon, alright? Alright babe. Thank you very much. <laughs>